Lisa Frankenstein. Let's talk about Lisa Frankenstein. Uh, Lisa, Lisa's uh, mother was tragically murdered at the very beginning of this movie. Now, I don't know if I consider anything that happens within the thir first 30 minutes a spoiler, but uh, her mother is murdered in a brutal, horrible way. And then her dad ends up marrying uh, someone from her high school, and she immediately has a sister that goes to the same high school and her and a new mom, the stepmom. Lisa has a dark sensibility. She visits this cemetery. She's uh, she's you would definitely describe her as a goth chick. She's into goth, goth clothes and goth fashion. And she ends up somehow manifesting a zombie from a grave comes to life. And becomes a friend. Friend. Thus the Frankenstein. She uses a, a uh, defective tanning bed, which nearly electrocuted her, to, to basically bring him more to life. He starts out as kind of this, this, this zombie played by Cole Sprouse. Is, is very stiff and can barely move, is missing a hand, and ends up becoming more human the more she puts him in the tanning bed. She's having trouble at school, of course. Um, you know, she goes to a high school party. Some guy is uh, tries to make out with her and she doesn't want to be made out with. Typical teen problems. And it it, it ends up, I'm, I'm, I, I don't even know. Okay, this all happens in the first 30 minutes, so it's fine. She ends up killing one of her schoolmates, the one who tr tried to make out with her, chopping his hand off to give the zombie an 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 another hand, which she just kind of sews on. It's weird. Then the zombie, in a fit of rage, ends up murdering her stepmother. They hide the body and just kind of ignore it. I, you know, look, it just gets utterly ridiculous because it, because it ends up being where... Um, you know, Lisa has this crush on this boy uh, that she wants to get with, and she asks the zombie to kind of help her get with the boy. But clearly, the zomb zombie has feelings for her, so it's a little love triangle there. Um, I, I this was written by uh, uh, Diablo Co Cody. Yeah, Diablo Diablo Cody. I can see where you'd read the script and go, "Oh, this is so clever. This is this is clever. We're definitely doing this. We're doing this." But the execution and the tone is so weird that it just doesn't seem to fit. It's this movie wants to be Tim Burton's Edward Scissorhands. Doesn't even come close. It's 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 incapable of hitting that tone. I mean, I did talk to people, I, I talked to people who liked it, who saw it. It was the um it was the AMC or Regal mystery movie on Monday. So I saw it actually Monday. I and it just didn't work for me. It was this weird thing where it's just like the way that the deaths are handled, the way that like Lisa kind of callously kills all these people. It's not, it, it doesn't make me like her character. Right. So I found the tone to be all over the place. I did not like Lisa Frankenstein. I felt like it tried way too hard. I don't think it's Diablo Cody's fault. I really believe that the script is very clever. It's the execution and the tone that isn't working for me. And I really like that lead actress, Catherine Newton. Um, yes. She's a new Cassie from uh, yeah, man, man. I like her. I think she's very good and she's very likable. It just, this movie did not work at all. And Cole Sprouse, I don't know, is the zombie. I mean, it's fine. It just didn't work. Alan, what did you think yeah. of Lisa Frankenstein? Yeah. I mean, Cole Sprouse put that Zach and Cody uh, experience to work here. Uh, no, he was actually um, he was actually not that bad in this movie. I, I agree with you one hundred percent. I had, oh god, I was so bored at this movie. Um, I, I saw it last night uh, at my local theater at ten thirty at night, and I yes, I was the only one in the theater, which meant um, there were there were just points where I, I just want to check my phone, see what's on my phone, and then I'm looking at the clock, kind of going through uh, how much time is left in this, and. I just I just found myself not really relating to this movie or connecting with it emotionally whatsoever. 
And I think you you hit on the fact that the tone is all over the place. Yeah. The the issue for me was, uh, am I supposed to be sympathetic toward Lisa? You know, and and yeah, and I agree with you. I think I, I don't think they did Diablo Cody's script justice here because she's yes. usually much more clever in a story than this. Um, and I and I feel like they took things out. To, so I, I think they took the emotional, a lot of the emotional elements of this movie out of it because, you know, the the new generation of filmmakers, I feel like what they're doing is they're just creating victims. And assuming right. that you're going to uh, empathize with that victim because they're a victim. So here's a girl whose mother died in a, in a very brutal manner. And therefore, we must sympathize with her. And therefore, we must excuse the things she does. Um, you know, they, they set her up as this, uh, uh, you know, uh, dead mother, uh, this outcast at school. Uh, and then she starts doing uh, very bad things like murdering people. And, and there's... You know, it's uh, there's just no emotional, you know, killing someone should affect you somehow, uh, one way or the other. You, you know, you can go the positive route and make it exciting, you know, or you can make it, you know, um, you could you go in the negative direction where it turns you into a darker person. That just doesn't happen here. Uh, I think the events of the movie uh, dictate these events, but not the person personally. And so it's just very hard to connect with the connect to feel sympathy for that lead character um and uh, and quite frankly a lot of the so-called villains of the movie you wind up you you see them as more sympathetic uh weirdly enough and they don't really address that um and and you you almost feel sad for them uh, for some of them who may have a, a a dark demise uh so i don't know i i i just worry about this generation of storytellers i just don't think they understand they understand how to connect with an audience, uh, and uh, you know, and I think uh, this is a mo this movie is an example of that. It, you've got to connect with an audience. Uh, that's what you have to do. That's what yeah. that's what makes great movies. Yeah, it's weird. There's that. Of course, you've heard of the book Save the Cat, which is mm -hmm. a book. It's a it's a book about screenwriting, and in it, it talks about examples. It's not necessarily always a cat, but when mm -hmm. you save a cat, which ripley ellen ripley did in the original alien remember she goes back to get the cat yeah to go into the spaceship right like it's like oh you know it's so which is so weird superman in the original superman with christopher reeve literally s saves a cat from a tree right like there's was something that superman three or was it... no that was superman one okay China. superman one and then and you know this is something i wonder if they change this so he saves the cat, gives it to this little girl. The little girl, this is in Superman 1978, Christopher Reeve. The little girl goes in the house, says to her mom, this man swooped from the sky, grabbed Fluffy out of the tree and saved him. And then the mom says, haven't I told you to stop telling lies and slaps the kid. It's hilarious. Um, I'm sure there'll be a trigger warning for that, but <laughs> The thing is, you know, what's weird is like the the nerdy kid that tried to make out with her and she didn't want that. Like that's I don't know that that's enough of a justification to murder him and chop his hand off. She actually just chops his hands off and then kills him. Like that's not. It's well, very me too. That's that's a me too what's attitude. That? That's yeah, a me too was... attitude that that doesn't that doesn't earn the payoff. Yes, uh, it's, it's a bad thing that that happened. But to go to that extreme and just kind of just do it in a, in a very cold and sociopathic way, uh, it, it didn't earn that moment. You need to build to that moment to where you feel justified for that that uh, incident to happen. Yeah, exactly. Death. Exactly. And then also the sort of callous way she deals with her stepmother, like, you know, she is dead and it's like, I'm just going to hide it and just like ignore it because she's supposed to be away on some on some business trip and then doesn't check in. So she lies to her dad and her stepsister and who are perfectly nice to her. It's weird. Like, yeah. like you don't see, whereas something like when you see the movie, Edward Scissorhands, there's there, you're so sympathetic towards Edward. Right. Yeah. In and, fact, and, you feel, you feel great sympathy for the stepsister by the end of the movie. Yeah. By the end of the movie, you're like the stepsister is like lost her mom. Like it's this, and and like try she's tried very hard to welcome Lisa into the family as a sister. And Lisa's just like she's goth and like too, like I'm too cool to kind of be friends. And she kind of just like 
whatever, my stepsister. And and so you really it comes down to I don't like the lead character of this movie. Yeah. She's not sympathetic. And I like the actress. Um, yeah, she's fine. I, I just feel like this movie is so Gen Z. I mean, like the, the stepsister. I mean, the stepsister, honestly, is probably the most likable character in this, even though they portray her kind of in a in a bad way. Right. It's like right. it's like one of it, you know, if I were to go into the Gen Z woke mind, uh, it's almost like you know, it's that white person who's really nice to you. Who, who goes over and above and beyond to make you feel welcome, but yet you know they're racist down deep inside. You know, that's, right, kind of right. the, that's kind of the attitude that these filmmakers today take, especially on white characters, on characters like this. Yeah, well, you know what? Can't recommend Lisa Frankenstein. Alan? Yep, yeah, nope. No, I, uh, oh man. Yeah, there, are, there are times where it's like, I should just leave now. Uh, I just don't see this. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I checked my watch a few times. Yeah, and I, like like I said, I felt bad because uh, I could tell I was the only one in the entire movie theater that night seeing this movie, and the right. staff was there waiting for me to finish watching this movie. And I was like, I did, I could, I could spare them and just leave now so that they can all go home. <laughs> 